Thanks for being with us. Delighted to be um, here. Let me start with a question just about the predicament the country's in right now. Uh -huh. There are some people who look at what happened in Helsinki, uh, what happened with NATO and the G7, yeah. Mueller investigation, and say, well, we have a president who's very unusual, eccentric, but the government's kind of running on a separate track from the president. There are other people who are more alarmed who think that we're actually in a national security emergency at the moment where the uh, behavior of the president is uh, urgently problematic. What do you think? So I see this as the behavior of the president is deeply problematic. And the reason for that is he puts us in a very different place internationally. He attacks our allies and cuddles up to dictators. And by attacking our allies, he not only distances us from them, he also is basically teaching our allies they can get along without us. He's, he's, does the dollar have to be the reserve currency? You know, that's of enormous value to America. But if you've got an unstable leader, everybody else starts to back up and say, wait a minute, I want to rethink that. But do you think... Do you have any uh, belief or concern that it's more than instability, that uh, some people, John Brennan of others, have suggested that Vladimir Putin has something on him, and that makes him a Russian asset? You know, look, I, I don't know. All I can do is measure what he does. Mm -hmm. And when he stands up and attacks our intelligence agencies and attacks our law enforcement officers and then defends a country that has launched a cyber attack on the United States and indeed seems to go wink, wink, nod, nod, mm -hmm. then boy, he is not serving the interests of the United States of America. The fact that I'm asking you that question uh, is an indication of how people's nerves have mm -hmm. gotten jangled by the mm -hmm. moment that we're in. When you think about what you and fellow Democrats need to do in response, do you see more of an imperative to calm, soothe, or fight? Oh, I think there are two things Democrats need to do. One is to be really clear about what we stand for, and the second is to be really clear that we're willing to fight for it. And we believe there's there's value in each of us and that government can be a real force for good on health care, on helping our kids get an education, on building the infrastructure we need to build, on fighting back this horrible opioid crisis, on investing in medical research. These are the things we can do together. I think the key for us, ah, here we go. Thank you. That looks really good. Thanks. Mm. What have I got here? Okay, this looks good. <laughs> you are more polarizing than some. And my question to you is, do you embrace that? Are you happy with that? Uh, what do you think? You know, that's funny you'd say that. I actually don't see it that way. I, I see it as wherever I go, people know what I fight for. Uh -huh. And a lot of folks agree with me, and even a lot of folks who don't respect the fact that I'm pretty darn clear about it and pretty straightforward about my fights for it. But you recognize that, say, with business people, with Wall Street, you're a very polarizing figure. You know, look, I get that there are a lot of folks who like having the power and the riches they have. They like being able to tweak their little pinky and the United States government does just what they want. They like being able to get regulations rolled back or not enforced. I totally get that. Mm -hmm. And I get that I, I push hard against that, that I may be a threat to them on that. But my view on that is don't call me the polarizing figure. They're the ones who want to take advantage of this country. They're the ones who want to cheat. They're the ones who want to say that their personal wealth 
their power is more important than building an America that works for everyone. You don't think capitalists are bad people? I am a capitalist. Come on. I believe in markets. What I don't believe in is theft. What I don't believe in is cheating. That's where the difference is. I love what markets can do. I love what functioning economies can do. They are what make us rich. They are what create opportunity. But only fair markets. Markets with rules. Markets without rules is about the rich take it all. It's about the powerful get all of it. Are you concerned about the high deficit or are you willing, uh, uh, as you think about what Democrats might want to do, Medicare for all, for example, very expensive. Look, of course I worry about the deficit, but I also worry about how we build a future. And right now, we're choking off the future mm -hmm. for young people. We're choking off the future for hardworking families who are watching the cost of their health insurance And that's a bigger problem up. right now than the that deficit. That is a big problem right now. You've talked about how you grew up on the jagged edge of the middle class. Donald Trump appealed to people on the jagged edge of the middle class. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you think he's doing for them? And if you think he's not doing well, as I suspect, what would you do for rusted out factory towns, coal towns? Well, let's start with Donald Trump. He made big promises uh, to a lot of people who've just gotten the short end of the stick over and over and over. And he not only hasn't delivered on those promises, he's literally turned in exactly the opposite direction. For me, what this would all be about is investing in all of America. And the best place for me to start is infrastructure. Mm -hmm. You know, infrastructure is like plowing your fields. Mm -hmm. If you plow your fields, you can grow things okay. in the future. If you don't plow your fields, you can't. <laughs> but we also have a tremendous racial polarization in our politics uh, that has made it difficult for Democrats to uh, attract votes from some of those people. So I remember a conversation I had with President Obama a few years ago. I said, are you concerned about this racial polarization? He said, no. When, when uh, those uh, uh, working class white voters recognize what Obamacare is going to do for them, they will come around. That has not happened. So look, what I think is going on here is that Donald Trump identifies a real problem in America, and that is a lot of folks are hurting. And then he takes a turn and says, and it's the fault of those people. Mm -hmm. People who don't look like you, mm -hmm. people who don't sound like you, people who don't worship like you, mm -hmm. people who are not the same color, who didn't speak the same language, fill in the blank. It is their fault. What he wants to do is set working people against working people. Black working people against white working people. How Jim. can you make that case better than Hillary Clinton or Barack Obama or John Kerry? I, I can't look backwards at how anybody tried to make that case. All I can say is, I live this. I know this in my heart. This is what is etched on my heart. We can build a government that works for us. A government that works for people who get out every day and try to build something for themselves and for their families. And if, if, government is on their side instead of on the side of the billionaires, instead of on the side of the giant corporations. This country knows no limits. It is an optimistic story of what we can do together, but we've got to have government on our side. President Obama's coalition, very heavy on young people, very heavy on non-whites. Hillary Clinton was not able to motivate those people in the same, uh, uh, with the same success in 2016. There's some people who are making the argument that to really uh, energize that coalition, to uh, succeed as a party, Democrats need to go down a generation and have someone younger, um, uh, you know, some one of the 40 or 50 somethings who are looking at uh, uh, running for president. What do you think about that argument? Look, I don't know. I think you need a political pundit to look at that one. All I know is why I'm in this fight. And I'm gonna fight as hard as I Could can. Could you do it? Look, I'm in the fight right now. Right now, we better stay focused on 2018.